my shades off. It's a view that's straight in my eyes. Just put my seat in the sky. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. Hello, hello. <clears throat> hello, hello. <clears throat> hello, hello. <clears throat> Yay, okay, hey, Paige. Yay, okay, hey, Paige. Yay, okay, hey, Paige. Okay. okay. Oopsies. I'm going to get started at like 7.03. I'm going to get started at like 7. Yeah, I'll be checking the... Okay, let's make sure you guys are seeing. Hey, okay, let me uh, share my screen again. All right. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. So I'm gonna try this again because technology is my friend. I don't know, I know what I did wrong. I thought I did. All right, there we go. Coolio. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to get started in two more minutes. Um, I got it back on my screen share because I look crazy. Because grad school makes me tired. Ooh. Hello to everyone else. As long as you all can hear me, um, I'll be checking the chat for questions throughout the presentation. I've timed it. It shouldn't take me the full hour today. Um, just because, yeah, it just shouldn't. Um, but again, I'm here to answer questions. So if there's anything that I don't go over during the presentation, let me know um, as we go and afterwards. I'll, I'm leaving. I left some time for questions as well. Um, so yeah, I'm here to help. I'm excited. Let me know what you think. Um, and we are going to get started in one more minute. I'm going to go share this on Twitter real quick. Since I've got. Okay, 703. We're going to get started. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time to join the 
workshop about how to get through grad school. Um, I'm really excited that you all have taken some time on your Thursday night to spend with little old me and let's get to it. All right, so first, if you stay until the end, I will send you a list of my favorite grad school hustles. Um, it's graduate school application season. Like I said, it's over. So you should probably know at this point what your stipend's looking like, um, all of those things. And so you know um, things might be a little tight. So I have a couple of side hustles that I do to help me make extra money and keep ends uh, met without having a lot of issues with uh, departmental requirements of not being able to work. So stay until the end and you will get that info. Now, I do want to know um, what degrees are you all seeking? Um, while this presentation has a focus on those getting like a traditional master's or PhD, I still, um, if there's a particular degree, I can speak to the specifics of that field. Um, I just need to know that, that you're here. So let me know in the chat what you're working on. Um, right now or you're planning to work on um, in the next year or so, so I can just have an idea and make sure that I'm giving you the in information that's most relevant to you all. All right, I'm going to press refresh to see if make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, so for the people going to grad school, let me know. All right. Hi, Kenya. Awesome. Congratulations. That's amazing. I know two people I can connect you to with soci in sociology. Um, one's a math student. I believe I have one PhD student. Congrats to Paige starting her PhD this fall. That is amazing. Okay, so um, I'm just still here if anybody else wants to chime in on what they're pursuing. And excuse like my weird row, let me close that, there we go. Okay, cool, all right, well, that's great because a lot of what I'm saying to you two is gonna be um, definitely relevant and aligned with what you, you're going to experience. Um, as PhD students and congratulations again. Okay, so let me just take it back a little bit and tell you all a little bit about a little bit about my story. It's not even about me, but like what I want you all to like understand from it. So the picture all the way to the left is me graduating from the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University way back in 2012. Um, super excited about life um like as you can see like i am like legitimately smiling um happy i'm excited michelle obama spoke at my graduation like life was great now fast forward this picture in the middle is about uh two or three months later i am taking a picture in front of my new department building um where i got my masters um the smile is not nearly as big as the smile over here um <clears throat> I just kind of was like, you know, happy to be in this point where I had been fortunate enough to receive a full funding for my master's and PhD at the school. Um, yeah, and I was I was grateful for it, but I really wasn't excited about where I was going um, location wise, but that's okay. Now this last picture is uh, 2014, so that's two years later, um, in about August, where I had just completed my master's uh thesis defense and i will tell you all like two minutes after i took this picture if not five minutes later i was literally in my mother's lap weeping like crying so 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 hard um because i was just so unhappy um when i finished my master's like literally unbearably unhappy um and for a, a bunch of reasons um that some of which I've explained before, I've had a webinar in the past um, called How to Secure Grad School Funding. And I talked about that and some of the challenges that I faced, even though I was fully funded, but there are some, um, there are some conditions sometimes to being fully funded. Um, and you can go back and watch that video on my YouTube channel. And also, um, 
just the culture of the location where I was at and my own um, readiness to be in that space. I just really wasn't. And so I was just absolutely miserable. So I quit my program. I was, like I said, fully funded for a master's and PhD. I got my master's and I'm sure people kind of remember this meme. It typically says like, F this. <laughs> and that's literally how I felt. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. So forgive me if I cough a bit. But that was literally how I felt. Like I was so relieved to be done with my master's. Um, and I just knew I could not stay where I was at. Like I was so unhappy that I literally was like, F it, I will leave. And I got a job. And my job uh, was the supervisor for the McNair Scholars Program at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I'm originally from Detroit, as I've shared before, um, people who are familiar with me in any way. Um, so that the McNair Scholars Program is literally a graduate school preparation program for first generation and low income students and students of color. And so I spent three years helping students who were excited about research, who really had a desire to go to graduate school, get into the graduate programs of, that they desired. And literally every day I was being reminded that I was not fulfilling my own dream of earning my own PhD. Um, so I've had students go to Princeton, fully funded, University of Michigan, University of Illinois, Purdue. Um, they, some have stayed at Wayne State and got masters. One of my students just texted me like two days ago. She got into Emory. Um, oh, hey, can you okay, McNair at UNC? I love it. So I mean, I I I love, I love, love, love talking to McNair students. And I loved my job um at Wayne State running the McNair program. But again, I was just being reminded in about like what I hadn't done. And so I kind of, after I had my F this, you know, throw the papers on the floor moment, um, three years later, I decided, okay, it's time for me to pick back up and like fulfill my dream. Um, and a goal that I had, have, I've had pretty much ingrained in my mind since I was about 22. Um, and your girl just turned 29 yesterday. So <laughs> don't let time defer your dreams, y'all. Because, <laughs> man, it's crazy um, that I'm able to do that. So. When I applied for my PhD programs um, back in 2016, this time around, I, I knew what I was getting myself into. I made a lot of mistakes during my master's program, and I don't necessarily like place blame anywhere, but I, I definitely did wish that I had someone who kind of told me what the expectations were for me as a graduate student beyond like coursework. Um, and I, I just wish I had more of an idea of what to expect and also what I what was expected of me and then things that I could do when, when, um, when stuff got sticky. Like, I just really wish that I had that person. And so that is kind of how this entire workshop series and the podcast have come about is like, I, I hadn't seen anyone giving out this information um, unless you were in a McNair program or in a Mellon Mays program, which like not every school has and not everyone gets access to. Like I knew about the McNair Scholars Program, but I was told by like someone who probably wasn't even like a credible source, I wasn't eligible. And so I never applied. And so, you know, I wasn't able to get, like I said, the information I was able to give to my students and the information I ended up learning by bumping my head a lot, by being, you know, incredibly unhappy. Um, I didn't have anyone to like tell me those things. And so I've kind of made it my charge, like, okay, if this is something I wish was out and I don't see it, I can just create it. And so that's, that's pretty much how this has come about. But um, bringing it back, um, to, I knew this time around what I was getting myself in, into, and I knew it was going to be on my plate. And I also had a better idea about what I needed to do differently so I could be successful. And I'm nearing the end of my first year. And so I also was able to test what I thought. And I've been able to kind of tweak it to give you all a pretty good idea of like first year um, obligations, first year's expectations, um, and just trying to like, again, report this stuff back out to you all. So you don't have to have that same bump in your head, making mistakes you don't have to make type of um, situation because grad school in itself is difficult. And so, and I, I believe that 
when you are a person of color or a woman, there's a, a different experience that you have because you're typically going to be uh, in smaller numbers in your graduate program. Okay. So first, I just want to show you all like what a week in my life looks like. Um, I will admit I'm a bit OD with my calendar, so don't judge me. All right. Well, I didn't even get there yet. So first, this is my usual schedule. So I try to wake up around before 6.30. I like to be up at 5, but I will admit the last two weeks I have not. <laughs> I'm not beginning up near 5 a.m. Um, but I like to be up by 6.30. I usually wake up, work out, um, you know, do my meditation, plan out my day, um, check my email, because usually sometimes my email will dictate what I thought was a priority or priorities might change or depending on what I got. What I got um, accomplished the day before, you know, those types of things happen. Um, I typically, you know, I try to get to campus about 8, 30, 9 o'clock so I can get some work done, um, pre prepare for any meetings I have. So even though I am a grad student, I have, I would say four out of five days a week, I have a meeting of some sort, be it an organization I'm in, um, some sort of fellowship requirement, meeting with my advisor, meeting with my research group. And I'm actually in two research groups. So like I have a meeting, you know, kind of like all the time. So like I said, this is like my usual schedule. So I, I always have some sort of meeting a day. Then I have I have a noon class on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. Then I typically after that, I eat my lunch and I do some reading, like something that's not too heavy. Um, because by the time I sit down and get comfortable, I have to get back up and go to class again. And my classes, as you see, are about 90 minutes to two hours. I don't have any one hour classes this semester. And last semester, I didn't have any one hour classes. Like all my classes are minimal one, one and a half hours. So 90 minutes of sitting in class, I mean, you might think it's nothing, but when you do it like six times a week, you just get tired sometimes. So I have to work, especially at the end of the semester, I have to work really hard to stay focused. But, you know, of course I do it. Um, okay, I see a question. So Paige asks, how many credits or courses do I take a semester? So yeah, the school I'm at has this weird thing called units. So I take like 52, 30, 48 units a semester, which is equivalent to um, like 12 credit, a 12 credit semester. So three classes. So I have three classes every semester. Um, honestly, I do not recommend three classes. If you can get away with two um, do so. But a lot of funding required that you are full-time. And so full-time at the graduate level and at the undergraduate level is 12 credits. I wouldn't go over that unless you just want to kill yourself, <laughs> like, like overexertion. Um, but I, I take three classes and, and I really, when I was in my master's, I took two classes and a like independent study. And that was a, that was way more manageable, um, for me. And, not saying that three classes is not doable because it absolutely is. It's just really hard and it's hard to do research. And so, like I said, if you can get away with taking two and not taking three, you will be happy, um, especially when we start adding all these other things on one's plate. Okay. So this is my week. Again, I am addicted to my Google Calendar and some of these things are not even school related. So Anything that's like a gray box, like this black and meeting, that's like personal stuff. Or like Saturday morning at 9.30, I have something to do that's all black, that's all in black. That's like personal things. Um, but the rest, the rest is pretty much school. Um, and then of course I've like, have you drank 32 ounces of water? I'm trying to get my water intake up, y'all. So I gotta put reminders on my phone, but you know, I have class. And then I have a meet, and then I have like group meetings. This is a Sunday. The one to the most left column is a Sunday. Like this was Easter. I totally listened to like a gospel album and then went to, I was in the office at 9 a.m. on Easter because I had so much work to do. And then I ended up having dinner with friends, which was nice. But um, as you see there in the leftmost column, I had like a full day. And then the next day, like my day doesn't really start till 10. But I'm, I like to be up. Everything above 10 is like my personal, relate, per, related to personal stuff um, for the most part. But you see, I have like a meeting at 11 a.m. on Monday. And then Tuesday, I have a meeting with my advisor at 2 o'clock. And then Wednesdays, I go to therapy in the morning because that's important to me. And so I drive out to therapy. And then 
Thursdays I'm meeting with one of my professors because my, that class is very hard. I meet with him every single week. Then Friday afternoons, Fridays are like so tough for me. I have um, a meeting with my other research group. Then I have a seminar that's two hours long. And then usually I'm doing something in the middle of that. But And then I have two recitations too. So it's busy, y'all. It's busy. Okay. So, and then Saturdays, y'all saw I still had like school stuff on my schedule. So I guess it's like, hopefully it felt like it looked like the most, right? But like, why are graduate students expected to do more or so much? And it's like one, because you're older. And when I say older, like you're a more mature scholar, you know, you're not like an 18 year old coming into a graduate program, unless of course you are some like super smart um, person. Cause I do know people who are like that, but most typical students are, you know, 20, um, Oh, hi, Brooke. I am a first year PhD student, but I already have my master's. So, oopsies. Um, because you're older, you're more mature, you know, you are, especially for those of you all who've been working and are, com are now coming back to school, you know, you're an adult. You're like a whole grown person. Um, and even if you're coming straight out of undergrad, you have, um, you have some, you, you are mature. You like understand the concept of like going to class and doing work. And those things are basic and they don't, those aren't required. Um, no one has to like teach you those things. No one has to train you for that. And then also like, don't forget, you signed up to get a graduate level edu to get a graduate level degree and get this ed advanced education. And so the expectation of g completing an advanced degree is gonna be more than you know an undergraduate degree. Okay, so what might be on your plate? And more than likely, at some point all of these things and then sometimes you know half of it depending on your year depending on your departmental requirements for teaching and coursework um and even department activities and then of course like your personal life stuff like never stops and i would like to i feel like in my experience has been your research will never stop um, especially if you're in a traditional program master's or phd level or edd or um anything like that the research does not stop. Like that is not gonna stop. So any questions so far? Oops, yeah, oh, that's right. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today is some of the time sucks, not like graduate school of time sucks, but like literal things that suck your time. And then the four, oh my gosh, the four habits to master so that you can navigate graduate school. Okay, this is the first thing. Graduate school, in graduate school, research is the number one priority, okay? That is what matters most. That is what professors care about. Your product productivity as it relates to your research and pushing that research field topic forward is paramount. That is why you're there. That is the important piece, okay? so like. I feel like we're always um, funding options that work for you. Okay, Brooke, um, I can answer that near the end. And can you, I'll answer both. I feel like I'm gonna try to answer a lot of these with the habits. So I do see your questions. Um, or let me just finish the slide and I'll answer them actually. I do it that way. Okay, but yeah, research is number one. Like, I know we think like coursework is really important. If you are a 4.0 student right now, that is amazing and congratulations. But that's not, it's not as important. Granted, you cannot fail your graduate level courses, but it is just not, it is not nearly um, as important. And I'll go over that a little bit more in the next section. But, um, okay, so I'm gonna answer questions in order that I got them. So Kenya first asks, how do you balance coursework with research? Yeah, it's really effing hard, Kenya. Um, you try your best to set a schedule time that you give, you commit to your research. So if I go back to my mine, I will admit to you right now, I am not giving my research enough time. So this green, the dark green section is probably the main time I spend on my research. So Saturday nights. Um, and then actually everything that says practice talk, it's oopsies, practice talk is like kind of throughout. 
that is actually into my research practice, speech, practice, speech, practice, speech, presentation, practice, pr practice, speech. Those are that's what I'm doing right now for my research. So I just have to get it in where I fit it, where it fits in. Um, but if you're like doing a lab, I think it's a little bit easier to set that time aside. I, my work does not require lab work. So I haven't it's a little bit harder, actually, because I'm not like committing a time to a location to do research. So it's hard. It's kind of like get as much work as you do your work as best as you can and then move to your research is kind of how I've been approaching it. Is Kenya's first question. Then Brooke said funding options that worked for you. So Brooke, I actually already had, did a workshop on graduate school funding and I can um, actually, I can send you a link to it right now. Let me just pull it up. Um, and I cover a lot of like what I've, what's worked for me. I am fully funded by my university. Um, and I think that while I'm grateful, I certainly encourage students to find their own funding by applying for, um, uh oh, let me make sure this doesn't start talking, um, by finding, uh oh, oh my gosh, y'all, here's a chat. Okay. There we go. So, okay, so Brooke, that is the YouTube video. Um, but I'm fully funded by the university, but I encourage students to find their own funding. I'm still applying for funding right now as we speak. I'm going to keep applying for my own funding. Um, but I have found um, that that's a good way. And nominations and some other things I talk about, again, in that YouTube video. Um, Paige asks, what if I've never done formal research? What should you expect with research? The research course in the beginning of the program should help you, right? Do you have any research you can point me to? Okay, so um, if you've never done a formal research, especially, I mean, because um, I guess I feel bad because like, I already know like what, what Paige has got going on so I can answer, you know, very uh, individually. But um, Paige, so for your field, because it's like a completely new field, like you're in a really good place. Your program is going to probably really hold your hand through the research process because because your your because of your background I don't want to like tell all your business but because of your background they're not going to expect you to have the research skills for that field even though the two are related right so you are going to get a lot of those skills in your program and so I don't think you have to worry as much about never have had a formal research experience because you are in a new field that has a that like you, you really wouldn't have the expectation to be able to do the work that you're gonna be doing. Um, and I do have a book that I can point you to. There's like two books. Um, and I don't wanna like walk away from my desk to look at my bookshelf, but um, one is called like Research Design. And then another book is called, oh man, I really like that book. It's like How to Write a Scientific Research Paper. And then there's one more. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to get back to you, Paige, because I'm drawing a blank on the titles, but three really great books. I'll be sure to send it to you um, afterwards, or if uh, things, at the end of the Q&A, maybe I can stop and do a quick Google search for you. But yes, there are resources that I can point you to. And no problem, Brooke, you're welcome. Okay, cool. So research is important, right? That's what I was saying. So how much research should you be doing? It could go anywhere from 20 to 60 hours a week, as you all saw. No problem, Paige. As you all saw, I did not. <laughs> I did not have 20 hours of research on my own schedule. But that is really like a goal of mine. In the summer, I'm going to be doing like 40, 50 hours a week because I won't have courses anymore. But your research, I want to let you all know, it can take form in many ways. It could be reading, it could be interviews, lab work, field work, etc. cetera. Like it, it's totally dependent on what it is that you're studying. So I know Paige is um, in something related to like engineering, sociology. I'm sure it's going to be heavy reading and probably interviewing some sort of qualitative component. Uh, Paige has a, definitely has a qualitative and a quantitative approach. A component. Brooke, if you get a chance, let me know what you're studying or what field you're in so I can also speak to that as well. But um, we know that it can take the form of these kind of different types of research. And so that's really time consuming. And it's, there are going to be weeks where you get a lot done. There are going to be weeks where you don't get crap done, y'all. Already I've had those weeks. 
Okay, next. Coursework helps you learn and practice the skills you need to complete your research. You have to almost kind of like, if you were thinking, I don't know how you all thought about coursework in college. I thought of it as a means to an end. I passed these classes to get the degree. And that was kind of the most attention I gave my coursework when I was getting my bachelor's degree. And so really the relationship I have with my coursework has changed because I, while I go to my classes, I'm very engaged in my classes way more than I was in undergrad. And now as a PhD student, more than I was in my master's, you want your, you want to pick and choose the information that's the most relevant to your topic. I wish y'all could see my hands like (laughs) picking, but you, you're not like, unless every single thing in that class is related to your research, which is amazing. And that's a great class and like suck it in, talk to the teacher, get totally, you know, involved in that class and just indulge in it. But if not, um, you need to, you know, pay attention to everything, kind of have a, a understanding of like these topics and these concepts, but you want to really dive deep into what works best for your work. It, that sounds funny, but really what works best for your work slash research. That is the whole point of coursework. So because that's kind of like this, the, the idea of coursework and it's not really the priority anymore, it's really a a supplement, a complement to your research. Like you can't really make progress in your research if you have no new knowledge and no skills to to work, to use, or to apply to your research. So in social sciences, you can expect a change in your classes where it's going to be a lot of conversation, where you're reading beforehand and discussing in class. The professor might not be leading as much discussion. They might give you all a prompt at the beginning of class and you are having a conversation. You've been doing a lot more of writing, like very heavy writing. Now, I'm, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned that I actually am an engineer, um, I'm an engineering PhD student. So like, while this isn't my scenario, I have friends who are in social sciences, um, excuse me, not that it matters, like, but I mean, I dated a guy who was getting a history PhD, and I promise you, he was reading like three or four books a week, like three, four, five books a week to talk about in class, you know, writing like these, these, I mean, to me, like this incredibly high volume of papers. Um, I mean, reading, writing, reading, writing, reading, writing. And one of my friends, she just finished her master's in creative writing like two years ago. I mean, she was reading three, two or three books, you know, she's not PhD level, two or three books a week, full books to talk about in class. So the reading, the reading um, load is really heavy. Whereas in physical sciences, I mean, I had a class this semester that was so, well, last semester that was so reading intense, like I thought my head was going to explode. But there's a lot of reading, but it's still kind of a very similar um structure to undergrad where it's lectures and you have quizzes and tests but y'all the concepts and the content is like so much harder and this is where i need my little corner so y'all can see my face because these classes is hard (laughs) y'all they are hard oops they are very very challenging um and so i still get homework i have like i have every all three classes i'm in have weekly homework have weekly, like one of my classes, it, go, it alternates between a weekly handout and a homework. Um, one of my classes, I have quizzes. Um, another class, I have group projects and I have individual homework every week. And then all three are culminating with large projects. And then one has a project and still has nerve to have an exam. So it's in the, in the content is really hard. So it's like one of my classes is applied data analysis. So learning how to look at our work um, right. So yeah, I actually was like going into this book, like what's most challenging about them. So, um, oh yes. Hi, NG. Okay. Um, and guys, okay. I didn't know if you put your name on there. Hey, guys, girl. All right. So the most challenging thing I could say right now about my applied data analysis class is number one, like it's all stats. So it is literally like, I just need y'all to see my face for a second. Cause I feel like I am struggling. Okay. It's all stats. Like it's all statistics and statistics. I'm like, meh. And, and then it's, it's stats plus R, which is like a data analysis software tool. 
And then it's it's like that plus the the data analysis with stats plus I'm learning R. So I learned R in my master's program, but I took three years off and I didn't use it. Like I pretty much made one code and I was able to run my data through that the full two years of my program. So I didn't really like use it a lot. So I'm learning it all over again now. And having to learn R, still trying to keep up with that class, it's just very hard. So like today we learned about multi-level models and multi-level models in, um, and how you can incorporate the fact that there's multiple levels in your data into your statistical model so you can make statistical inferences from the data and like how you do that. And it was hard. I, I had to meet with my professor today for an hour, hour and a half where like, I'm like, okay, these are my notes. Can you explain this to me? I have a question about um, transformations. I have a question about this. So the content is, is what's challenging um, and then I will go back to sharing my screen, but it's for real, y'all. It's just it's just difficult. The information is I feel like hard, and I know I'm not the only one in my class struggling with it. Um, what live chat replay? Hold on. And then I actually have been looking into like how to get through difficult information. I know someone was asking about that, so um, <laughs> yay, it feels real now. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, um, fa uh, become a faster reader. Like there are speed reading classes in Gazi. I don't really know if that's an approach you want to take, but you could. Um, better ways to take notes. So, oh my God, literally, this is my next episode on my podcast. Like, I promise, because I like I want to get through my birthday and everything that was in March, and then I wanted to talk about getting through difficult information because I feel like that has been. Who my ministry this semester is getting through difficult information. It's been really hard to do. Um, and so I will actually share like note taking. So I use OneNote and then I record some of my classes, not all, because I ask my professors for permission. So I record notes to my class. I take notes in OneNote. I try to keep the book open when I'm in class. So then I can like take notes on the book where I have questions and I can shoot them to my teacher via email. I don't really like meeting in person because I'm weird, but I definitely like to send um, emails to my professors um, with like, I didn't get this, can you send it to me real quick? And that way I still have it afterwards. Cause if they explain it to me in person and I forget, which happens to me all the time, I'm screwed. Okay, it is 7.36 and I have like 30 more slides. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, but I am still answering you all's questions whenever you need. Um, teaching, teaching is very important because if you plan to have a career in academia, you need to have a t have had have had taught a class if you want to apply. You, like you can't just like apply for a job and have no experience. Granted, there are many people in this world we live in right now that are doing that, but let's not be those people. We can be better, y'all. Um, and then if you're not on that route, it reinforces your understanding. And at the very least, it pays your tuition, which um, again goes back to the YouTube video I did before about, well, I had another webinar about funding and I, I go into depth about that. So it's really hard to get rid of teaching altogether unless your fellowship specifically says you are not allowed to teach, which I recommend. Mm -hmm. It will make your life better. But teaching and or grading is time consuming. I would say minimal prepare like five to 10 hours to teaching like between office hours maybe preparing the homework and or preparing the homework solution answering emails if you have to teach at all like maybe a professor has you do lectures like doing that but this varies quite a bit from school to school course to course department to department so i don't want to harp on this too much but just know teaching while it is great and useful and i personally aspire to be a professor so i'm, I'm excited about my teaching load i know I rather have it when I'm not in classes and that way I can give it more time and it's not taking away from my research. But it's really hard when you start talking about doing research, doing your coursework and teaching. So if you can at least delay your teaching to when you aren't in classes anymore, because if you're in a PhD program, you likely won't have classes forever. Like prayer, y'all pray. I hope to be done with my coursework next May. <laughs> Maybe one more class in fall, but I will be 30 next year and I want to end, I want to begin my life in my 30s where I don't have to take no more classes ever again. <laughs> that is my little goal. Okay, next, 
department activities. There are a million of them. There's social events, there's search committees, diversity organizations, graduate student assembly for your department um, or association, depending on what it's called at your school, and then research group activities. Go to these things. This is what I did not do in my master's program. I was like, F that, I ain't going to this stuff. Like I'm about to be the only black person there. I don't wanna be there. That is not the productive or good attitude to have about these things because it's all about networking and networking is important. Be, you know, even as a graduate student, as you're getting all this education and, you know, we're all intelligent and like now having this graduate level, you know, education, like also gives you more credit to being intelligent or whatever. Like I'm, you know, you're smart, you can do all these things, but it's still about who you know, man. It's, I wish that I could say like, once you're like super smart and like have all these degrees, like all the doors open, but that's just not true. You still need to have a strong network that can help you. And if, I don't know about, you know, what everyone's situation is like, but I know I, um, my mother has a master's degree now, but she got it when I was getting my master's degree. And so her network isn't necessarily, I don't have access through my family to the level of jobs that I would be seeking afterwards, right? Like I don't have, I don't even know, I know like one professor, but she's at Michigan State and I wanna go to HBCU. So you know what I mean? Like it would might be a reach for her to connect me to somebody, but you know, again, it's all about networking and having people in your department who know what your research is about and who would be a good fit and all that. That is important to, to have. And it doesn't hurt to have like people in your department who know you, who know your name, because that's how opportunities also come about where they pick you for certain activities. Like I've been chosen to have dinner with the president of the university already. So, you know, it's, it's about also making sure you connect and they knowing who you are so that you can take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, lastly is personal life, y'all. What, what is that? I don't have one. I wish I could lie and tell you that I do. But I definitely like encourage people to have a life outside of their graduate studies. So finding a hobby, this is my hobby. This is, I love doing this, I'll admit, I, I genuinely enjoy it. So I really, um, I, I, I don't mind doing this. Like I love spending my time, you know, helping people of color and women like be successful in graduate school, but make friends outside of your department. That's certainly something I did immediately do. Like I like will go out by myself to meet people in Pittsburgh who were not students, who at least at the very least did not go to the same school as me. Um, I have like a whole group of friends who like have jobs and they're young professionals. And so I like, um, oh, thank you, Brooke. I saw your message appreciate it but you know when i need to get out like i can actually one just text me beforehand like what do you what you've been up to i've been talking to you in like a month because i've been you know busy but like it's just nice to have people who aren't in school so i can talk about not school stuff like that is something that's important and then some another thing is embrace embrace your location if you're moving away from home so or moving away from wherever you are right now where you might have already had roots like I said before, I did my master's. I lived in rural Illinois, like middle of nowhere, Illinois. But I found another black girl who went to an HBCU too. Her name is Kelsey. She was on episode 22 called Tough Mother Mindset. That is my, she already has her PhD. Me and her, thick as thieves. Like I saw her, I was like, you're gonna be my friend. And she and I like explored the city, found stuff to do and really kind of made you know, little old Champagne Urbana, a home, um, you know, while we were both there. And even though it wasn't like a lit city, it was no DC, no New York, no Chicago. We could get to Chicago quickly, fortunately, but we made it, we embraced it. And so I'm planning to do the same in Pittsburgh this summer, embracing what the city has to offer. Okay. So I've kind of gone over all of these things and a lot of what I'm about to say, I've kind of ended up weaving into this by answering questions, but I still want to go over this section of like, how are you supposed to manage all of this? Like it is, it is hard, but it is not impossible. And I just want to encourage you that you can do it um, and provide some habits for you. So, oh man, I don't know what happened, but thank you. Okay. You have to start developing good habits sooner than later. So I think it looks like from the response, most of you all are not 
um, already in the PH in your graduate school programs. And so if you're not in your grad programs, you have a really great opportunity over the summer to develop these habits. And that is to your advantage. Like I remember asking my advisor before I got here, like, oh, what should I do, you know, over the summer? Cause I already knew what it was about to be. Like I knew it was about to be crazy. He was like, enjoy your summer. I'll send you a book or two and don't worry about it. Now I did read the book, but that was not enough for me. If I could do things over, what I would start doing when I was in over the summer is first prioritizing myself. Um, I've always been um, someone who like, I love to serve. Um, I love to help other people, but I had to prioritize myself now that I'm in my PhD program and it's weird and it's hard for me to do sometimes, but I'm getting better. But last semester was definitely more taxing than this semester because I was saying yes to way too much stuff. Um, number two, daily reading, make that a habit. I am still working on this habit and I wish I had it established. And when I say reading, not leisurely reading, research reading, I wish I was doing that every day over the summer so that, excuse me, by the time I got here, it wouldn't even be a challenge to be having it as a part of my life. Next, something I'm also still working on and is grueling, but I plan this summer, it's going to become a habit. Daily writing. Daily writing will get you up out of here faster than probably anything else. And when I say up out of here, up out of your graduate program in a, in a great way. And then lastly is picking your battles wisely, which I'll talk about more when we get there. Um, I'm still here to answer questions. Just so you all know, I just want to get through this because I still want to have like another, a, some more time at the end, maybe for Q&A. But if not, you know, that's fine. But I am still answering questions as we go. So if anything comes up, feel free to ask. I'm here. Just want to say that again. Put yourself first. Graduate school is a time to be selfish. And I think I missed that when I did my master's. Um, I just didn't understand when people said that. I was like, what do you mean you got to be selfish? Like, that doesn't make sense. I already, since I've been in my PhD program, I've missed a funeral, um, which was hard. I missed a funeral. When my mom, my mom likes me to come home to like go to events that she's having, I have to say no, like I can't do that. I can't just come home just because you want me to be at home. Um, literally my best friend asked me when to have her bachelor, I mean her bridal shower so that I would be able to make it because she knew that my, my schedule was super crazy. Um, what else has happened? This weekend, I'm gonna miss my best friend's, well, it's not her baby shower, but it's her, it's her sister's baby shower. And she's like my little sister too. I'm gonna miss it because I just did all this other traveling for, you know, unfortunately, I hate to say it this way, but like other events, like my best friend got married and then my other really close friend turned 30 who like has pretty much been like one of my biggest supporters. Like, and she told me a year ago about her 30th birthday, I had to go to those things. And so that means I don't have any time left to come to take time and travel to Detroit to go to this bridal, this baby shower. And I had every intention on going because I, I really was happy for her, but I can't go anymore because I have to focus on school and I can't, even though like, can I make the drive? Yes. Can I like study and not sleep and do all that? Yeah, but like, then I'm not producing or being given my best at school, which is what I have committed to. And so, I have to say no to stuff now and it sucks. I mean, it sucks. Like missing that funeral sucks. Like my one of my closest friends from high school's little brother suddenly passed over Christmas and they couldn't like pick a they didn't weren't able to pick a date for the funeral. And so I had my mother go. I was like, you have to go to this funeral. Like you can't miss it. But I stayed up until the wake. But five days later I had my comprehensive exam, which is a, an intense four day exam. I had to get back to Pittsburgh to get my work done and get my studying done. So those are the types of like hard things that come when you're in programs um, and you like have to miss it sometimes and they're really difficult and you have to tell people, you just have to hope that those people really support you, know that your heart is there, even though you, you physically might not be present. Um, and then also like, again, this whole idea of like, could I make it to Detroit this weekend? Yeah, I could, but that's nine hours of me driving that I could be doing work or I could just like not be exhausted or off of my thrown off kilter by traveling. So you have to literally prioritize yourself. It's, it's, it's hard. Um, next is reading daily. So I feel like I kind of talked about it before, but yes, procrastination has no place in grad school. 
it just it just doesn't it just doesn't happen like if i procrastinate and i wait till like two days before a homework assignment is done i'm probably only getting like half of it done and i know someone actually asked the amount uh the amount of work or type of work so like for that class my first homework assignment ended up taking me four straight days like thursday i worked on it after i was done with class and i'm done with class at 4 30 so like 4 30 to 10 30 i worked on that friday is kind of a wash for me unfortunately i'm not done with my day until like five so five to ten i worked on it saturday i woke up i ate breakfast 10 o'clock i said i'll do that work 10 to 8 still wasn't done i started crying because it was so much it was done, it was due at 10 p.m on sunday i think i got through maybe out of the eight questions i got through like six and they were probably super duper wrong but i did i did do them but it took a lot of time so and it, i had to read first and then i had to do the work and you know kind of go back and forth so don't wait till the last minute just read just read 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 learn how to skim there are a lot of um resources online about learning how to skim honestly i just googled it um the more you do it the better you'll get at it the first semester last semester i was trying to read every single word and that was just it's, not, it's almost not even possible you know like you just can't read every single word so now i read abstract intro conclusion skim to the middle if i really like it then i'll go back over it if not oh well and an easy way for you all like i said since you are you know entering into a program is to set up a google alert just set up a google alert through google scholars on whatever your topic is and just read like one article a day that comes in that makes your life super easy and that's how i handle getting articles right now is I just kind of have a couple of authors that I really like. And then I also have a couple of um, topics that I'm interested in and they just pop into my email every morning. And it's really nice. Next is writing daily. Uh, the final product of a master's is a thesis. The final product of a PhD is a dissertation. And so, um, and those were, words are used interchangeably so don't worry about that but the point is you cannot write either of those in a couple days i will argue you can't write a phd in probably less than four months i mean honestly if you do it in four months you're like a beast i don't know anyone who's ever done that the most i feel like i see people getting close to the end and the reason they're not graduating on time is because they're not done with the dissertation it's time consuming and it's hard so the sooner you can get used to writing the better um and that's why I said make a goal for like the summer to read to write like a hundred words a day. So you know, skim the article and then write like a hundred words a day, which is, you know, what like two or three tweets like worth of of writing. Try and do that. Um, and let me know if you're interested in doing a writing challenge. I really want to do a writing challenge. So if you're interested, let me know. Say yes or no for the summer. Something I've really been thinking about doing and will help me stay accountable and then also be able to have people to do it with. Last uh, is picking your battles. So women of color and people of color are really small percentage of the graduate student population. Um, literally about one fourth uh, in 2014, I would probably argue it hasn't gone up. And so you might end up being the token person, especially if you're a woman of, co a woman of color, like you might be the token in your department or in your cohort or one of very few. So I've, I feel like I've said this before as well. I am w the only black woman and black person in one of my departments and the other department, they pretty much like let in one black person per cohort. So there are like four of us on campus, but that's international and domestic like black people. So two students are, well, like four, okay, so it's like six of us, like four, four of us are, four are African and then three are domestic that are black people, so, um, yeah, very few, and then they're like way, some of them are like one foot out the door, third year, second year, you know, they're not, they're not in it with me, even though they've had the experience, but they're not in it with me, and when I was at Illinois, I, I was the only black person in my whole department, and so I had to reach out to other departments that had black students that were in engineering, so, with that, what might happen, and I really hope it doesn't, but I feel like I'd be lying to not say to not say anything. And I see Ngazi and Brooke are down for the writing challenge. Yay. Um, microaggressions, aka little shits. But a better way, a better description of them is a statement, action, or incident regarded as an instance of indirect, subtle, or in unintentional discrimination against a member of a marginalized group, such as a racial or ethnic minority. Huh. 
it's a lot. <clears throat> it's irritating. Those are like small things like something that was said to me today. Someone was like, oh, what are you working on? I'm like, oh, I'm working on AVs and ethics. They're like, that's impressive. Which is like, why are you impressed? I'm a PhD student. There's nothing impressive about what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a grad student. I don't know what you mean. Like, it was like, not like explicitly racist or sexist or anything, but like the tone of it just like made me uncomfortable. And so there's actually a piece, let me see if I can find it. There's a piece I just read in higher ed, inside higher ed um, by a woman of color who wrote about these things called micro affirmations. So I'm planning on incorporating those into my social media feed of just like positive statements about you belong here and you deserve to be here. And I certainly um, encourage you all to make your own affirmations about your experience, uh, surrounding your experience, about yourself as a scholar, to affirm yourself when the BS comes. Because I, I, I don't wanna lie and say it's not going to, but what I do have for you is a suggestion. What? Okay, is a suggestion about what to do with when you have microaggression or when you deal with it. And this was a thinking emoji, these little white boxes that you no longer see emojis. That was the thinking face. What do you mean? But of course, okay, this is how you're supposed to say it though. <clears throat> so what do you mean? Like that, okay? Like, what do you mean? Like a very inquisitive type of way. And that makes whoever made a comment you didn't really like, stop and think about what they just said to you. Or like, in what way do you mean that? You know, some, some sort of way to make them realize, ooh, what you said was inappropriate. You need to think about it. I'm gonna give you a chance to think about it, but don't come and be crazy. But it's like a very subtle clapback that I wish I had when I started dealing with these things when I was in grad school. I didn't know what to do with it. I just accepted it and it made me really uncomfortable and resent my program and be very resentful because I didn't know how to handle it. So this is why I'm sharing that with you. I think that's like the best comeback and it's completely, like I said, calm and it, it's not argumentative or anything. So I hope that you like that. Thanks, Kenya, I'm happy you love it. But yeah, you gotta you gotta check this stuff. So, who was 755, y'all? All right. In conclusion, learn how to say no and say it often. Establish your own self-care routine. These are about prioritizing yourself. Read an article a day. You will be so happy if you get into this routine. The sooner the better. Think about it now. If you were to I actually just did the math, if you were to start 60 days ahead of time, which is June 13th of this year and school starts the middle of August, you would have read 60 articles by the time you start your PhD program. That's impressive. And if you would have six, if you wrote every day, you have 6,000 words done, right? Yeah, 6,000 words, do the math real quick. 6,000 words written about your research topic. Even if you end up switching, you might be able to use that for something else, for a class, or you, know, you could tweak it and freak it out to make it for your, for a class or for a project, but 6,000 words, you'd be ahead of the game in a major way. And then of course, keep what do you mean in your pocket? Keep it, y'all, I keep it in my pocket. I'll be ready in case somebody try it. So there are some things I really wanted to address today. Um, and I obviously totally mistimed this talk. I was like, it'll take me 30 minutes, but um, some things to consider is budgeting your stipend, which I am going to do. Working with your advisor, which can be um, heaven or hell, depends on what happens and how to make it more heavenly than heavenly, hell-ish. Um, planning out a rough outline of your coursework, which is important. Picking a research topic, um, and then also like grant and mental health and then physical health. So those are things I'm, sometimes I'm experimenting on myself, some things. Um, <laughs> I love it, Paige. Yes, use at your current job. You gotta check these folks. Um, but these are things I wanted to address in the future. If there's something that you are like dying for me to work on, um, as always, send me an email. I'm happy to talk to you one on one. And also, um, some things do make it into the podcast, which I will get to next. Listen to Black and in grad school. So I do have an audio blog slash podcast. Every single Tuesday at noon, I release an album. I release an album. Ha, I wish. I release an episode and I talk about my experience. I chronicle my experience as a graduate student of color and a woman. Um, each week I have three segments. The first segment is Lessons from the Trap, where I talk about, well, I pretty much pick a rap song and 
apply it to grad school because I think it's hilarious and it entertains me. And I feel like hopefully you all like it. Next, I kind of give a weekly recap telling you what I've been going through, what's been good, what's been not so good. And then lastly, I f finish up with kind of like, I don't like to call it really tips and tricks, but that's the best title I've got so far. So sharing some sort of tidbit of information to help you make your experience, whether you're in graduate school, preparing to go to graduate school better. So like I said, every Tuesday you can um, sign up, you can subscribe today if you want. Um, I will drop the link to subscribe right now. But yes, please listen to Black and in Grad School, the podcast. Um, it's my little um, labor of love. I've been doing it for six going on seven months now. And I just released the 23rd episode this week where I go over 28 things that I've learned um, or accomplished in my last year of life where I was 28 um, and now I'm 29. So yeah. And then also, you know, follow us on Twitter and my Instagram just got started y'all. Like literally yesterday, <laughs> I finally got an Instagram. So well, like I post to my Instagram rather. So follow us black in grad school. There's no plus sign obviously um, and on Twitter and in Instagram. The Twitter is very active. Um, the Instagram is about to be very active. So I don't want you to miss out on anything. I'll share all of the web workshops. I, oh, every Monday I share a meal on my Twitter. It'll also be on the Instagram, uh, like making sure you meal prep and you're eating good and taking care of yourself. And um, there's more, I don't know. I also to remind you every week to call your mom or your grandma. Like that's important to, to, to keeping those relationships. We're also on Facebook, but you know, come if you want to. I don't, you know, I really the Twitter and Instagram is more important, but it is eight o'clock on the dot. Thank you so much. I'm still going to hang around for like 10 minutes to answer questions. Anything you have, please let me know. I am so, I am here to be a resource to help you all to make your lives easier. I don't want anyone to go through what I went through when I took my first step at grad school. And so that is why I'm so, so, so passionate about this. And so I am here. Hey, thank you, Brooke, for my 46 followers. Thank you. But um, please, 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 I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thanks, y'all. I'm about to switch it back to take the take the uh, thing off. One second. <clears throat> All right. Stop. All right. Hey, here to answer any questions. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I need some water. Lord. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you so much for, you know, joining. I am really grateful for everyone who joined and took some time to listen. You know, it's Thursday. I think how to get away with murder is still on. I don't really know. Oh, Kenya, I'm happy you like the podcast. Um, Brooke, I don't know of any chats for Black Women in Doc, doctoral studies, but I do know a Facebook group. So I'm in this, um, oh my gosh, y'all, I love this Facebook group, like love them. Um, and I will drop it in here now, super, super duper inclusive. Um, it's amazing. It's called Women and, non Women and Non-Binary People of Color in Grad School. So I am dropping that in here right now. They, I mean, pretty much um, they will answer any question that you might have about anything. Um, and then budgeting the stipend. Yeah, I'm about to get into that. Like, who let me, I had a job before this. And so I had a salary and now I don't have a salary. So my pockets, I hurt, I hurt every time I get a paycheck, I'm hurt. Like, so I decided to make less money. Okay. But you know, I'm grateful. So um, I definitely, that's like, that's like, if it's not, I want to do it next month. I'll say that. I want to do it next month. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, and Paige, I'm happy you enjoyed it. Um, yes, you know you can reach out to me. Um, some people, like, if you send me enough emails, I will send you my number. <laughs> so don't even worry about it. Um, all right. Brooke, you can email me at Alante, um, 
at strengthsnotstrikes.com. I'm about to put it in here. Notstrikes.com. And they come straight to me. Just send me an email. And Paige, I will send a replay email actually um, probably in the morning because I'm about to do work after this. But yes, I'm saving the webinar to my YouTube. Right now, I don't know if I keep these videos like live where I might just have it where it's like unlisted. But if I send you the link, you can look at it. Um, I'm not sure what I did with my last one because I don't know. This is kind of weird. Like just knowing that my YouTube videos are sitting out here. I don't know. I'm weird like that, but it will be saved. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, Brooke, I sent you the email so you can send me any questions you have, you know, and Gazi, that's the homie. She since we've been talking, need to actually probably reach out to you and just say hi. Kenya, you also talking about budgeting the stipend. I'm like I said, I'm planning on doing that soon. And um, I've been I've been making money stretch for a while. So I certainly have some thoughts. I've helped a couple friends get their budgets together this year, um, help them start investing, save money, um, save for traveling. That's something I really want to talk about. Like I'm very passionate and I really love traveling. And so wanting to talk to you all about like how to travel and on a grad school student's budget, which is, it's hard, but it's not impossible. Um, oh yeah, you're welcome, Brooke. And y'all don't have to sit on here, y'all. If y'all want to go and get off, it's okay. But I just want to let you know that I am here to answer questions. Stay around for a couple more minutes. And I did add the Facebook group is this Facebook link. Um, let me look for this book real quick. Even if I do send you a message page, if you're not list if you're not here anymore, which is okay, I'm happy to um do something. Oh yay, Google Scholar Alerts. No, y'all, those are life. Like also before I go to the to my to my um little bookshelf. If there's a, a person that you admire or you want to be as a mentor or someone you want to talk to, I know it sounds kind of creepy, but set them up on Google Alerts too. So when they get like any type of media push, you hear about it and you know about it. So you can just send them a little note like, oh, hey, I saw you were in such and such. Congratulations. And you can do the same thing for actual people. So they're like, I haven't found many women in transportation, which is my field. And so when I find a woman researcher, I like immediately add her to my alert. So I know when her work comes out so that I can amplify her work. That's something that's really important to me. So um, I've only found two so far, but their information shows up quickly. Or if I find a person of color, um, I like want to have them on my school scholar alert. So I'm keeping up with their work. And one woman, y'all, she is a beast. I'm talking about every month she is producing something. So that also gives me an idea of like, what's an expectation for um, a woman in my field. So it go, it's, it's more than just the reading. It's also keeping a good idea of like, who's being productive and scholar or scholarly productivity. And also um, if you want a reason to talk to somebody, it's, oh, I heard about this, congratulations. Okay, I'm going to look for book. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. All right. This is the last book I would suggest. This is The Craft of Research. It's a really amazing book. Um, definitely helps with writing your research paper. That is where this becomes very useful. Um, I love this book. I actually now like, oh, I should probably look at it again. But it, it just is just a really clear way of like organizing your thoughts around your topic and your research question and then how to do a literature review. Um, that's another thing I want to write. I want to talk about that at length because that is like a whole thing. I'm literally in the process of it. It's kind of annoying, but um, but it's great. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so this is a really good book. So Crafted Research. Research design um, are two really, and then how to publish a scientific paper are three really great books for reading. And then, I mean, for writing. For reading, I was given the suggestion of how to read a book, which I'm not gonna lie, I asked for help 
after the school year started. So I have yet to read it. And then I had comps over Christmas break. So I didn't really have a chance for any leisure reading. So I'm hoping to read it over the summer, but I'm not, I haven't gotten to it, but I want to read it. Um, any other questions? See a school of four people on here. Hey. I'm gonna just refresh. All right, y'all. Again, I'm still here. You can send me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer any emails. Um, I usually get to them, I would say like within a day. Um, yeah, I need to add literature review stuff to my list of things to talk about. But also, again, if there's something you have that's totally like kind of, I won't even say left field, um, I would definitely, Send me a message, like I'm happy to help. And then Ghazi, it's um, the craft of research, then how to how to write and publish a scientific paper, and the last one is research design. And so um, let me see if I can at least pull up the covers um, of the books. So I use research design, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed method approaches, fourth edition. That's a really great book. I use that to introduce my students to the differences between these different research uh, methods and like what they look like kind of from a, from a large view, like a bird's eye view, a thousand, you know, like not in depth, like it's not gonna help you per se with like your field, but it definitely will give you like an idea of like, this is what scientists typically do. And this is what social scientists do. And this is what, um, you know, mixed method research looks like. And so it, it kind of is, it's good in that way. And then craft of research is for helping you organize your thoughts and then write your book and then how, write your, excuse me, write about your research. And then how to write and publish a scientific paper is pretty much how it sounds, right? It literally is telling you how to um, do, um, um, I'm sorry, I just saw everyone's response, but this teaches you how to write kind of publication quality and very targeted to publications. Um, and yes, I can write, I can certainly talk about writing anxiety and the writing process. Um, I, look, a couple of days ago on Twitter, I wrote about like my process and having to come to terms with the fact that like, I'm not a computer person. I my first draft is pretty much by hand and then I type it up and I fix it as I type it and more words flow as I type. Um, and then I have to print it out and edit it, which is, I feel bad. Like as someone who, you know, cares about the environment, having to print stuff out like really bothers me, but <sighs> nothing else has been working. And I waste more time avoiding my computer to write than I do just taking a piece of paper and writing the crap down. So I just have to do that. Um, it is 8.11 now, so I am going to log off. Thank you all so much for taking time. I really do. I really appreciate it. It makes me so happy that I get to share this information. I want to continue to share it. Um, this is a wonderful birthday gift. And so I hope you have an amazing night. And again, reach out if you have any questions. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to the podcast. Ciao.